G'day and welcome to the front is I'm XQ. Today I'm joined by Agrid. How you doing, mate? Oh, I'm slowly but surely improving. The throat is still like sandpaper, but yeah, other than that. Hmm. But we have a problem today, don't we? Uh, we're on a we're on a super time limit in terms of being in game, looking at the mural of the calls. <laughs> I'm about to die in game, yeah, but that's fine. That's right. We um, found a new bug, and. Um, Despite the fact that actually he's got food and water, he can't actually drink the food and water, so he's uh, running out of uh, hydration. Welcome. Very quickly. So, yeah, we're on the we're on the clock. So yeah, we uh, we're going to go over the mule today uh, and just give you our thoughts on it. And initial, even from the very first time me and Alga got in it, um, it just feels something cool about it. I don't know what it is. It is a very very nice feel of the vehicle. Mm. Um, and as I discovered when we when I was playing around with it, it's got the tightest turning circle of any vehicle in game. Yeah. Um. So it is a it is an absolutely unique vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um. I'd rather have seen it be Drake, uh, not Drake, um, Grey Cat or or Argo. Um. I don't have but, a problem with it being Drake personally. I but think it, I think it falls in line with the the new industrial stuff we're seeing. So as I said to you, but Vulture, Drake, but Drake do have a history, even in the in the law of being a salvage slash industrial company, and so it fits. It does fit with that as well. But, um, but yeah. So I'm on Lyria here, so it's not the best uh, driving conditions. It's obviously a little bit still at night too. So the, there's a bit of snow and a bit of drift. Um. But yeah, um, we've also got the concierge skin on it, so it's a little different again. Actually, go, go back next to that other little vehicle, because that, that is the smallest vehicle in game. Um, this is the second, this is the third smallest vehicle in game, um, that from, from what I can gather. Um, just looking at the Matrix of Lies. So the PTV um, is the smallest vehicle. I couldn't actually find the stats for it, so we actually had to spawn it to actually have, have a look. Um, but as you can see, it is um, smaller than the mule. The smallest do you remember, vehicle. Do you remember what I said? How it's like a tire more in front and a tire yep. behind. Yep. It's like dead on. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, hmm. But PTV has a passenger, but no cargo, um, and that's about it. That's probably the biggest difference there. But sixteen bucks for the PTV, as opposed to the forty bucks for the hmm. for the mule. Uh, My... The only other vehicle that's smaller. <laughs> is actually the uh, Ranger Cycle, which is uh, smaller in length. It's 3.2 metres instead of 4.2. Uh, two metres in width and two metres in height. So that's the only other vehicle that is smaller in every metric than the Mule. Other than that, the Mule is the smallest vehicle we've got and certainly the smallest wheeled, wheeled vehicle we've got. Definitely the only one that can turn on itself. And it's like the only one way. that can turn like that. Mm. And that is what makes this an absolute gem in terms of the loading and offloading of vehicles. My so. biggest question though is what's to come. And what I mean by that is if this can pick up one SCU, what's to say there's not a vehicle that can't carry like a singular raft cargo yeah. container, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I think there will be one that comes where it would still have that same turning circle. No, I don't. Um, I don't think it and will. And I don't think it would. Yeah. Um, but this is certainly ideal for well, Probably the key thing I've got is, does that forklift at the front raise up? So can you stack crates on top of each other? Mm. Yeah. Um, because that will that is what would make um, this really useful. Otherwise, it's just stacking a first layer and then mm -hmm. big deal. I've um, now just discovered that uh, uh, at next year's uh, demo rally or whatever, they're gonna have drifting. Because it's just taking drift like crazy. Look at this. Yeah. I'm just holding A and W and rotating the mouse, and it's just continues to drift. Yep. He's doing burnouts. Basically, yeah. Crazy. Burnout without the tire burn or the dust or the, you know, so yeah. Hmm. But yeah, there's just something a little cool about it. Um, definitely, it doesn't have its full functionality yet. Because at the moment, just being able to carry a, a you know, a 1.8 SEU cargo box, 
bolts is not the best, but when you can definitely carry the two full SCUs, it's definitely going to make a big difference. Um, but well, as I said, I really, I don't think this is going to be the best of the cargo transferring vehicles. No. I, I think it, it's going to be one of the bigger ones. And obviously, if you've got one that can take a whole raft one, there's no reason it probably can't take some of the smaller ones, or maybe even the one in the middle can do a bit of both. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and as Algar and I always tell you, they tend to sell the worst thing to the best. So I'd, I'd say at the moment... <coughs> and yet... I'd be waiting a little bit. Yeah, and yet even with that, I still put this in the same category that I put the, the, um, the PTUV. Mm. Um, I actually think the PTUV is one of those vehicles that you will want in game for offloading yeah. and loading ships um, because it is ubiquitous utility vehicle. This is not quite as utility as the utility vehicle and yet as the PTUV and yet mm -hmm. it has that advantage of being able to load and offload uh, ships. It's certainly going to be ideal for loading and offloading um, ships like the Caterpillar mm. um, and the Constellation especially if that forklift can raise boxes up higher. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think that, as you said earlier, that really is the big thing for this um, yeah. from a utility standpoint. Yeah. Um, I think at, at the cost of $40, both you and I would not recommend this, considering like in six months' time when it's freely available in game, it'll probably mm -hmm. then also have its full functionality with the cargo refactor. So for me, it's... It's an easy wait. And if you really do like the skin, just pick up a skin and use yeah, that on the one well, you get in game. You know, it, it's, it's a frustration. I can understand why CIG give it the price tag because, you know, the yeah. development time. Yeah. But the more you sell, the more units you sell, that less that development time and cost of developing and the profit margin increases. Um, mm. And I, and I just don't see this as being the same value as a, an ES, which is $20, or an, or even a, a, an LN, which is $40, or a, or the or the starter pack ships, the, mm. the Mustang Alpha and the MR at $35. Yeah. It just doesn't, it just doesn't seem to gel. It, to me, it is, that is, that is the big issue. And it, it is, it, that's my only gripe mm. with this. It is a beautiful little craft and um it's yeah. probably the best straight craft that i've seen so now you can see i've deployed these arms there just doesn't seem to be really much of a way for it to go up and down and no. like yes there is a little track there you can see on if i get out i'll try more yeah. clearly um but yes there is a little track there but it just doesn't seem to go high it, enough and it looks it's like up, it's yeah. it's got a mechanic here to keep it all level but again here's the track like at the bottom where i've got my cursor and here's the top and i, I just, I just can't see how it can get it, like it needs to go up to the, like somewhere up here yeah. to even remotely be able to lift stuff. So I, I think it really is just a carrier or a loader. It's not. Yeah. To, it, it, it doesn't do seem it. to have that ability mm. to raise things up, and that's the problem. Mm. We do know that it can. You can actually get the it, one it's the cargo block in the back because we've actually put it in there in the live stream. Mm. Uh, but it does have other unique things. It's got little storage containers as yep. it's going, and it's also got, I think, All it's also got the modules or all, all that in there as well, like yeah, we saw on this so court, there's, yes, a, there's a fuel port, um, and I believe, I can never find exactly where it is. There is actually a storage one. I think yeah. this might be it. Don't quote me. I can never get close enough on some Wasn't it on the other side in the middle, somewhere like that? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yep. So that's the storage one. But there are also... You know, uh, ones like this that open and stuff. So it is, it, it's kind of already got its gold pass, so to speak, um, yeah. which is pretty cool. But, um, which unfortunately also seems to indicate that in terms of being able to raise cargo up, it's not going to be able to do that. And yeah. that, that doesn't make it a forklift. That, yeah. So that I, just I, makes I, it a, a cargo <laughs> mover. And yeah, yeah. That's it. That, that's probably the best way to, to classify it as a cargo mover. So, yeah. It, it, it's a good little thing. Um, I won't be picking one up for myself. I don't know about you, Algrid, but yeah, I'm not going to be picking I did, one up. I did pick up a couple, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I picked them up mainly A because I like it. And, you, you know, me generally, I'm, I, I suffer the OCD type. Got to catch them all. Buys everything. Pokemon syndrome. Um, yeah. Um, I still haven't got the I still haven't got the steel. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm being I'm being strong. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I did get this. But I also got it because it is at, at the moment still the cheapest LTI token uh, that we've got currently. Yep. Um, but is it as good as a hoverbike? 
which was cheaper. Mm. I, I'm not sure. Um, the hover quad came in at probably get it more a you, bit longer. Probably get more utility out of this though than you are going to get out of a hover bike because the hover bike's just a storage container. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I guess the that... hover quad, by the way, is 0.3 meters longer than the, the mule, half a meter narrow in width, and uh. 1.5 meters lower mm. so so this is obviously shorter range though where that's probably what it's it's unique ability so to speak is more long range and they yeah. and all those bikes seem to be like six degrees of separation between them um, yeah of which i think you and i would agree the dragonfly is still the best um yeah. so yeah. And, and the other thing that they showed with this is that fuel and those all those little things that keep those vehicles going is going to be key because yeah. this has got a fuel port and if this has got a fuel port you can guarantee everything else is going to get a fuel port hmm. so that right unlimited range we seem to have with the bikes that is um hmm. you know going to be a thing of the past they can go different forms too they can have battery yep. based ones they can have liquid fuel based ones they can have gas ones uh, yep. <laughs> hell they could even have one that has its own solar panel so it can recharge if they really wanted to you know they can do whatever they want in that regard but um yeah i, I, but I now with them does, recently announcing that there's going to be a hundred plus vehicles we've still got a lot more to come yeah and i think it just does say that what we've got with with vehicles is and and that fuel aspect they've got for the vehicle mm. is certainly saying that this is almost like a survival game. It, yep. it fits into that. You've got to manage your resources because if you're on a planet and, you know, <laughs> you're on a planet and you've got no fuel, eventually uh, even your ship is going to run out of power and not have the ability to support life. Or, 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 or I wonder also if you can actually go back to your ship and refuel from the ship. You know what I mean? Like that, that fuel transfer stuff that you and I talked about a few times, like with jerry cans and stuff like that I, and i wonder how much that's going to play into it because like can you imagine a dragonfly but you take the saddlebags and you put fuel in them yeah that changes then, it quite drastically but if you're on a, if you're on a planet like you know aberdeen or you know you've you've run out you don't have your quantum fuel you're out of hydrogen fuel you're on the planet your ship's out of fuel hmm. eventually from what I gather, you're going to run out of power to power your life support. You're not going to, and even if you've got a vehicle, you're going to run out of power eventually or fuel on mm -hmm. your vehicle. So, you've that aspect of managing resources is going to be speculation here, pretty big and huge for uh, for Star Citizen. So, mm. all right, well, I'm literally about to fall over and die in game so, i'm down to the last four percent so um what i'm actually going to do is we're going to be giving this exact meal away this is a uh the concierge skin i think it's called the smoke stack so we'll be uh taking that and giving that away right now um and the winner of that we drew this earlier on the week is boris the animal he won the mule um and now that's all three of them so these are the other two winners for the other two ships that we gave away as well so we've got carly olsen with the legionnaire and a derek 79 with the scorpius Yep. So make sure you contact us so, for, and so we can get your details so we can actually make sure we pass those on to you. Mm. Don't right. forget, like, subscribe, hit that bell because it feeds the algorithm. Mm. Leave your comments. Tell us what you think about the mule. Are we off our rocker? Am I off my rocker in terms of this being a survival, turning into a survival sim? Um, <laughs> I, think, I think there are going to be some survival elements to it for sure, especially with the way it's going but yeah I, I generally like to know what people feel about the mule that if you've if you've yep. tr had a chance to try it because it's just there's just something that feels cool about it and it's it like it's not like a normal vehicle when you get in it there was just something that felt cool it's weird to it, say it, it does have that I hate to say it it has a rule of cool feel about it it, it mm. just there's it's got no weapons so it's not a pew pew ship it's, yeah. it's got a small amount of cargo so it's not a massive cargo mover and, and yet it, there's something about it that goes yeah, it just picks up a box and you, you can't even do that yet. And it's weird. <laughs> and you just drive and it's yeah. like, cool, I'm in my own little yeah. forklift thing. And it just, but I, I'd love to see some races with this thing in it. Cause I think it'd be quite funny actually. Can you imagine like some kind of little racetrack and you've got to pick up like, like a, um, you know, it'd be really funny is like a relay. You know, where you got to carry your box and carry drop box, it off. Drop it off. Like, someone else picks like it up. Like a, like a four, four, you know, a four player <laughs> team you know, relay. I think that'd yeah. be hilarious. Well, um, uh, yeah. The cargo Olympics are a thing mm. in law. 
um, where cargo haulers would see who could, who, which stevedores teams were the best, you know, at loading. And there'd be categories like, you know, mm. stacking the best and, and all the rest of it. So, yeah, it's, it's not... It's not beyond the pile. Mm. So. All right. With that then, he's been Algrid. I've been Execute. And we'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Be well. <laughs>